Fred had sent around printed minutes from the November 21st, 2022 classification hearing. These appeared to leave out significant portions of the meeting. Fred Orlowski will send the others links to both the November 21st meeting as well as the subsequent meeting on which at which the single rate was adopted. Kathleen Grady felt that the language used was demeaning to the board and Fred Orlowski said he felt that Brian should have controlled the meeting more. Neither meeting has ever been put online through FCAT. I wrote MCAT, but I didn't mean FCAT. Unanimous vote to send a memo to Brian concerning a possible quote unquote code of conduct to be adopted for all town meetings as several other area towns have implemented. After that, we reviewed the tax rate setting process and Mayflower. Um, we just discussed what it cost to have Mayflower valuation come in, uh, which we actually are mandated by the state now because of the utilities. And I handed around the, a possible list of for a list of the open building uh, permits, which will be some of the places we will be looking at in the coming summer. So that that is the meeting. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes as read? Accept. Second. Second. Second motion. All in favor? All in favor. All right. Okay. And we have Second. unanimous approval. Okay, so now we have Brian here. And what we wanted to do in meeting with Brian was to determine exactly what the board, our board, is expected to provide to the Board of Selectmen um, come next fall before the classification hearing. And I guess, uh, I'm not sure um, where we go with this. I don't know whether, Brian, did you send this memo to the select board? Um. Yep. Okay, so you've all received this memo that Brian sent out. Okay. Um, I guess what we need to know is if you, the select board, need to uh, have something else, not have something uh, from, the, from the memorandum, everything was very neatly lifted out. Yes. And then I guess the Board of Assessors should say what they think. Okay. I, I guess where, where this is, is is coming from, I guess listening to the to the prior two meetings where the classification hearing was, was discussed, uh, there were several comments made that information was not provided. Well, the select board, I mean, the Board of Assessors was never asked, well, they asked for, they were asked for some information it was provided to Brian, and the, the one item that was not, we tried to get, and it was difficult to get. Uh, I don't think we still, still, even, haven't, still gotten haven't gotten it today. Uh, other information was asked for that we're not sure if it was even relevant or what, it, what, what if it's necessary for any kind of decision to make on, on the tax rate. Uh, and I guess we didn't want to keep going with this kind of, uh, requests for information for stuff that either wasn't relevant, wasn't available, or shouldn't make a uh, a difference in, in any kind of decision. Uh, some of it reflects on personal information about property owners that yes, we have and anybody can look at, but as far as making comparisons or, or, or different uh, aspects of it, uh, we didn't feel should be discussed at a classification hearing. I guess if the select board wants to know how the board of assessors operates, what we look at, what we consider, what is public, who comes in to look, who cares, I guess they should ask us. We're available anytime. If, if you have specific questions or if you want to know what information is available, or if you want to know specific items, Come to ask the Board of Assessors. Don't wait till the classification hearing because we're getting lost in all this detail that probably doesn't make a difference. 
we're here, we're here, we have the information. So don't ignore us during the year and wait till the end and say, well, you didn't provide us that because sometimes we can't do it on short notice. Okay, then I, uh, I guess I'll go to my, uh, the other board members here, if you have anything else. No, I agree with what you said. You know, you know, we'll give them whatever we can, but we have to be asked to know. And, and well, in a timely some manner. manner. Some things we can and some yeah. things we cannot. Yes, income information is not public. No, it's not public. Yeah. Income and um, anything like that. Anything like that. Personal yeah, the details right. of where we yeah. got to right. the numbers. Okay. Right. I, I just, I just want to just sort of set the scope of what the select board can and can't talk about. This is not a posted select board meeting. So they can, right. they, as members of the public, they're allowed to listen and, and provide comments on their own behalf, but they can't make statements on behalf of the select board. Select board. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of the information that that so this is my opinion as to what I think would be relevant to the board. I laid out in the memo here. I mean, there's essentially four questions um, that that each select board or board council in whatever town has to answer each year. Um, I think these what's listed here is the information that would be helpful to them. Um, I, I do agree that you know income in, income information is 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 not something that's. Um, Necessarily part of the decision, um, and um, you know I understand that when it comes to the small commercial exemption, the listing of um, the listing that that we're trying to get from the state with uh, about the companies with ten or ten or fewer employees is something that should be confidential to the assessors, so that information shouldn't necessarily be shared. Um, but what can be shared, and I talk about a touch of them on in here a little bit on the memo is that um, it, I guess because it can't be shared, the assessors would sort of need to do that calculation. I think it would be helpful with what so the number of eligible and you know that type of thing without names, without addresses, without any of that stuff, but it would just be sort of just there's okay. 10 that. parcels eligible, this much, you know. 10 parcels eligible this much would be um, discounted and that type of thing. Um, and what's been really helpful, I think, um, and Fred, I think you had, we looked at this a couple of years ago, was the was the what if, that what if scenario worksheet on DLS Gateway. Um, I think everybody has a login. Um, it helps you, it lets you run different scenarios of, you know, um, if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to do a split tax rate, you know, you could do it at 5% shift or 10% shift or 20% shift. And it just lays out the numbers and what the different tax rates would be. Um, and then there's also boxes that in the, on that worksheet as well, you could also run things for the small commercial exemption scenarios with the small commercial exemption, the residential exemption, and also the, um, I don't think they have one for the for the open space. Well, because you under, yeah, the un, uh, the open space for us is all our chapter land. We're one of the few communities in the state that took all the chapter lands out of the commercial designation and put it into the two hundred designation, which is open space. So, talk about open space exemption is not relevant in Waitley. Right, and I, 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 that's what I had understood from past conversations that we had. Um, so, it would it, are you saying that there's no land classified as two hundred, or there is land classified as two? We have all all of our chapter land is is in the two hundreds. There are specific codes, for example, two seventy eight is pasture land, I believe. Two seventy seven is productive woodland. Yeah. As classified in Chapter sixty one A, right. So that's how we use the two hundred. Yeah. So that would be relevant to on the second the second tax policy question here, right? right? So there would never be 
because they're already getting a tax break anyway, because they're in chapter, there would be no additional, and there is nobody in 200 that is not in chapter. Right, but I think that's a, I mean, so the information that I think would be relevant would be what, what, what class two land would be, which class two open space properties would be eligible for the open space discount, not whether they have chapter status or not, but whether they would be available or not, I think would be the question, right? I wouldn't know how to how to designate that. What are you going to do arbitrarily say if you have an extra 20 acres that becomes eligible? I have no idea. Well, I think it's just asking a listing of the class two open space properties, I think is what, what would be provided. Would be all chapters land. Okay. Or mixed use. Then I think that's what would be I yeah. think that's what would be provided with I think with the notation I would say all of this lands in 61A, 61B. And we already received preferential right. tax, uh, tax treatment. Right. And that and that might be a reason why why the assessor would not recommend that there be a, a, yeah. a open space discount. Um so again, like I wrote in here, the law says that the assessors may or may not provide a recommendation to the select board. Um, it's within the board's purview to do that or not. Um, so, the other thing I would like to perhaps throw in at this point is in in worrying so much about helping seniors who are on fixed incomes, and of course there are fixed incomes and fixed incomes, is that there are many people I suspect in town over the age of uh, 70 who could qualify for the, the uh, statutory exemption and which takes off, well, at this point, it's up to almost $600 off of your tax bill. It's, uh, it's based on assets and on income and it goes up every year based on the COLA that is provided by the state. And the, this year, I believe it's 596 comes off, it starts at 500, cannot go, I believe, over a thousand. Uh, but that is something that if you want to help people on a low fixed in, in income, that is a better solution in my thinking than the split tax rate, because I don't see, well, it's not my, I don't, it doesn't matter what my opinion is. Anyway, that's my opinion on how to help people. Well, that's that's one of several ways that either low income or older people can apply for rebates for taxes. This has been that's an ongoing. Many of these programs to apply for that have been ongoing for years. Information is a, is available in the assessor's office, outside the assessor's office. The forms there explaining how to apply, who's eligible, and the amount. But it's not only that. There's also exemptions for for veterans uh, benefits there. Uh, there's a CPA exemption that people apply for. There's uh, you do your income taxes, circuit breaker. That's an exemption. It, it looks at your taxes, your income as well. So there are a handful of, of ways that people can apply for rebates. Now we don't go, I guess, publicize every time it's available or every 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 uh, year we go through this. But uh, I guess maybe that's something we could do, or the town could do. Say if you're interested in applying for rebates on your taxes, look at these programs. They're available. Come to talk to the assessors if you want further information. Uh, other towns do that. That's a bit, that's available on there. They don't list exactly all the details, but they list uh, some of the qualifications for it. I, I guess if we're trying to help the low income people, older low income people, that's a way of doing it rather than adjusting a, a tax rate. But how many? I mean, well, what percentage of over seventy is that? I mean, I know they're not veterans is a different set of, but in our community, you know, you said there are a lot, a lot. I have no idea. Yeah, and we don't it's really know that. List. That's how I find these things out. It's through the speed listing, yeah. which everybody who works for the town 
has yeah. access to the joint value. In the street lift, that has income? I mean, how no, no, no. What does it have? Has age. Age, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. and, and we get very, very few people come in to, I guess, contest their assessment because we deal with assessments, the, the board of assessors, not really the tax amount or tax rate uh, that's applied afterwards. But it's the assessments that we use to value property, uh, we go and review that, and they get they get updated, uh, revised as necessary. Very few people come in. To object to, to what is being done by by our board here, board of assessors, they always have that option coming in, and we do explain. People do come in and question some things, and we explain uh, why it's this way. Or and sometimes we do change the values. Uh, it's not it's not a uh, a lot of people do that. So that's always an option, and and we so I I guess we feel comfortable doing that. We feel comfortable that we got assessed values on properties in town that are that are representative, uh, that are fair and, and equal. Otherwise, and the state the state does look at how we assess values. We have to have a, they make a comparison to sales, property sales. We have to be within a certain percent over under. So they look at that. They question yeah. us where, where we go, how often we do it. So it's not like. We're just doing it on our own, whatever we, we think we want to do. There, there's checks on, on how that's been, how that's done and monitored. All right. I think Cynthia's point, if you're talking about the senior means tested exemption, I I think that's a local opt-in, right? I think the town needs to adopt that at a town meeting. Oh, so we have the senior exemption. The senior means tested exemption it's on the books. What's it called? The senior means tested exemption. Means tested. I don't know that. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, we have the standard statutory exemption for for people 70 and older who okay. conform. In, you know. Let me see if it's the same thing. I'll send okay. you what I'm All thinking right. about. Yeah, and the thing I'm not sure of, and what I do remember from an earlier time, was that whatever number you had at the moment. Or perhaps the year previous, that would be the way to get around anything too much. Uh, when the when the clause was adopted by the town, that was the amount that the state would would then reimburse the town. And I believe we only have three senior exemptions. Oh. So, and I'm not sure if that's still the case. Maybe that that part of the rule has gone away that you can't have, say, 12 or 20. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could have them. It's just that the town uh, wouldn't get any reimbursement from the state. Yeah. But I mean, if you're talking about, well, yeah, you have to think about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you had 20 of them, that would be 10,000. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, $10,000? A lot more. <laughs> Taken off, well, yeah. that's because yeah. yeah. At five hundred per anyway. Uh, is there anything else that needs to be said on the classification issue? Yeah, I've had my hand up for quite a while. Uh, yeah, if you're ready, I can. I've got a question to ask. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so it, it sounds to me like, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not speaking for the board or anything that the information that is outlined in this memorandum is information that you can get and would be happy to provide to the board for next November. Am I mistaken on that? Except for, except for the commercial listing, right? I don't uh, think he asked you to give the commercial listing. That's that the information that's, uh, that's um, confidential is confidential to your board. Right. Right. Um, but it sounds also like you're suggesting that other information we might consider is um, regarding uh, like low income uh, or elderly means tested or veterans, uh, various folks who have um, exemptions or rebates available. So um, for me, I think that would be good information for you to add because that actually helps inform the decision from my point of view 
um, that uh, if if I'm we're th trying to think of of shifting tax burden away from fixed income, especially low income folks in town, then um, having a good idea of how big is the tax exemption they might be able to apply for, and maybe they have or maybe they haven't, um, but some idea of how many people. Uh, you believe to be eligible and how many people actually take advantage of that. I think that would be useful information. Um, so if that's okay, something no. you, if that, I mean, you don't have to give me names or anything like that, but if you said. Well, we, we, we don't have the in, uh, income information, even, you know, to do it without names. I mean, I, I wouldn't know whether, you know, Joe Blow down on, on River Road qualifies for he I can say he's 70 I can say he's 80 but I can't say he's he's eligible oh, yeah well, it's a you know, no, no income qualification that they can yeah I mean why yeah then, but, but you mean, know prior year right you know the prior year how many you've granted and the value of those maybe yeah yeah you might not be able to say well, I mean I know how many we've granted we yeah. granted right, about five four to five I think that's what of the three yeah. metrics <laughs> Yeah. I think, you, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I know in an ideal world, we would know both. We would know how many people could be applying, but don't for whatever reason, uh, and how many uh, who who do deserve this and fit, or I should say deserve is not the right word, I mean, I mean, fit the qualifications and actually get that exemption. And how big is that exemption? Because to me, comparing that exemption to like how much would their taxes change under a split tax well, rate? That would be a really relevant uh, comparison to make. And it might be that we're better off going one way than the other. And so having that information to me would be really helpful. And, and I think you would be, you'd be able to tell me how much um, on average folks are uh, being exempted from or being rebated, probably, I'm guessing. But you wouldn't- you want to answer like, that? Like, is it always six hundred dollars reduction? Yes, there is no once once it started at five hundred. The town at a town pool at, at a town annual meeting voted to go to clause forty one c, which gives the option to add the cola on. So yeah. now we this year are are giving anybody who has applied and is eligible four hundred and ninety six dollars off their tax bill you can't say i'm going to give you 250 and i'm going to give you all okay. 596 yeah. and the other thing is i mean i to me like putting it on the website is kind of useless because the people who are going to qualify this are probably not looking they may not even have a computer let mm. alone think to you know go to the way the website to look it up Yep. This is something that a poster should be made and hung in maybe the post office and the library and the town office. We yep. could even be put with, uh, I don't know, whatever circulars go around. You, you could do a mailing where everybody gets it. Sure. Somebody yeah. could put an article in the oh, that newsletter thing that we get, the Waitley, whatever it's called. Yeah, but the yep. best would actually be to put it with the tax bill. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree because you're thinking about your taxes when you're opening the tax bill, but you don't necessarily think about your taxes when you're opening the scoop. Right. Uh, but it, there's no reason why you can't do both. I mean, that's what the scoop is there for, right? It's there to to get information to folks in the town related to stuff going on in town. So anyway, yeah. I, I guess what I want to say was was point taken on um, on advertising and better um, understanding what discounts are already available for uh, people on fixed incomes, uh, uh, particularly uh, low income and vets. Um, so if vets you- Vets are pretty much taken care of. Well, I, I, I guess I, I guess I wanna know a little bit more about like what's, what's the magnitude? We have six vets who get a tax rebate of whatever it happens to be um, and without names, but just giving us an idea, are people saving like $10 a year? Or are they saving $1,000 a year? Or is it something in between? Because you want to that, explain kind of... I, can, I can explain it right oh, now. Oh, but but, but I, I want you, and I, I guess what I'm saying is that would be really good information to have when we get all of this information in November. 
Okay. You can explain it now as well, but I don't know that I'll remember it between now and November. Oh, well, it's pretty easy. Uh, it's based on, I mean, the VA is taking care of its people and a lot of, of veterans, I mean, a couple dozen veterans get some, some form mm -hmm. of an abatement and we really should be calling it an abatement. In abatement. Our Okay. Uh, of people who have 10 to 90 percent disability as the VA has named it and they have to submit their letter every year from the VA gets only gets a hundred uh, four hundred dollars off their tax bill uh that goes up from that to a thousand off mm -hmm. we have I believe, three of those and then we have one person in town um, whose husband who has died is completely exempt. Mm. So they don't pay any tax. So that's that's the veterans. Veterans is all taken care of. They yeah. they see to it that the information yeah. is got. Okay. It's it's the senior that is. And well, when you say the veterans are all taken care of, I didn't know any of that. So. Well, it would I, I think it would have been it would be really helpful if we're when we're looking at all of these other things that Brian wrote up in the memo, which were all relevant to making a decision, having that information at hand that we have um, 20 veterans who are getting abatements in the range of 400 to a thousand dollars. That would be really good information to have because I think it it impacts how we think of making the decision. So I, I, I thank you for the information here, but I just want to make sure that that gets to be kind of a part of like, like when well, you say they're all taken care of because you don't have to do anything else with them. But when we're making a decision, we we need to understand everything. And so part of what you're doing is helping educate us, which I really appreciate. Um, and maybe the, the memo put it in pretty, I don't know, it put it in black and white. What are the kinds of things that we need to to think about what are the kind of numbers we have to compare and um and you know if it turns out that a split tax rate would only save somebody twenty dollars and they're already eligible for a five hundred dollar tax abatement that that has an impact on a decision so um thank you for for being so patient with us and explaining this because lord knows i don't know enough about it um but uh, but I just want to put that kind of on the list of things that kind of get described here because that's what that's kind of stuff we need to know. I Thank forget you. what you said, Joyce. Uh, was what would be the average amount at a twenty percent shift in the split tax rate? What the average was that was going to go to the homeowner? Was it like two fifty or something? Yeah, two to three hundred range. Yeah, yeah. two sixty-five. So these all of you know these abatements all do you better than that, and you have to take into account too that the seniors who would probably qualify are living in older homes with much lower assessments. That therefore the amount of savings would be even less, obviously, because it's going to be based on what your assessment is. But that PowerPoint that you did, Brian, that um, with, with a split tax rate, that would be every residential owner. Oh, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you so can't. this is the discount programs or whatever you want. Exemptions. Exemptions. That's a smaller yeah. amount of people. Then it's targeted. Then it goes to a tax rate. I it's mean, targeted. Yeah, it's a very, it's a different target. Yeah. Right. So I mean, one everybody gets it, and the other one only a few. But I, I, I guess what all this comes down to, I, I'm thinking we're we're going through looking at all kind of data and generating who benefits, uh, who doesn't, how much, and there's no clear-cut answer. I mean, other than yes, some people will benefit and some will gain. Is that what what the the policy decision should be for this town? It's more of a policy decision. You can look at data all, all, all year long and provide you different scenarios of of uh, who gains and, and who isn't. 
when it comes down to and looking at what other towns do, what do they consider? Yeah, they look at some of this data, but it's more of a policy decision about businesses, commercial properties in town. Do we want to discourage that kind of activity, that kind of growth in town, or do we want to welcome it? And we talk to neighboring towns, we talk to other assessors, we see other reports that, that talk about a split tax rate, and that comes down to the, the final decision is, what do we do with the commercial people in town, businesses, property owners? Do we want to welcome them, or do we want to, we want to uh, discourage them from coming by having a higher tax rate? Yes, some, some commercial people will, will say that that is a, a, a big detriment to them. The, the lower income, the lower assessed commercial properties will tell you that. The higher ones, you could say, it doesn't matter. We shouldn't be looking at Yankee Candle and Covestro. It doesn't matter to them what we do. It's the other ones that it makes a difference to. And that's where a lot of communities look at their, their smaller commercial, industrial, personal property values in town because they want to maintain that. They want to encourage it. And, and I think that comes down to, to more of a policy decision because you could, you could look at a lot, lot of different ways with the numbers and they'll show you who gains, who benefits, but what is the final outcome? What do you want to do? What do you want this town to represent? You want to encourage businesses or not? And so far, you know, we've been with other communities in town. I mean, we've-, we've um, Yeah, this is getting similar to other towns, other, other, other towns in, in Franklin County or Western Massachusetts, however you want to look at it. And that's what it comes down to is, the impact on commercial. Everybody knows, yeah, the residents will save money, but we also want commercial in our town too. So, yeah. and, and, and I think that's, so what's in the memo I think it is, it is trying to focus specifically on data that that's within the, in the control of the assessors essentially that's generated by the assessors, any other, I would imagine, and I can't speak to the board, any other information that, that people want to submit related to other tax policy arguments, I, I would imagine they would be open to receiving that. It's a, it is a public hearing, so I mean, any other information that's going to be provided that people feel is relevant to the decision, I think, could be submitted and, and should be submitted if that's what, that's what people want to do. I think one other thing, uh, I guess again, advocating for this businesses. Uh, large businesses contribute to the town. They donate money to the town. I give you an example. Yankee Candle donates money, not not directly to the town. It's in our budget, but Yankee Candle gives money every year to either the police department or the fire department, anywhere from I'd say five to ten thousand dollars at least minimum. Whaley Deerfield does the same. Uh, for Deerfield does. They also give scholarships to frontier students from in a twenty to thirty thousand dollar range. Uh, total scholarships for I don't know ten twenty students. They they do contribute donate to the town that way. For Vestro, the other the other big uh, property owner here in town has been cited as as uh, uh, for contributions to 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 helping the towns. Uh, Deerfield and 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 Waitley, uh, as as uh, praise for for their efforts to get involved in, in local activities to support local towns. Uh, they've been praised uh, on uh, national level, state level to to do that. That's some information that many people in town don't see unless you're a police department and you know that we're getting money from Yankee Candle. And it's not just recent that they've been doing it. Yankee Candle has been doing it since they opened business in, in Whaley, since they opened that factory here. I know. It goes back to 20, however, years they've been here, 20, 25 years. Longer uh, than that. They, they, they've been doing that. It's about the night of Dancer. And, and, yeah, and, and these, these two large commercial properties is, have contested the assessments in the past. Because before my time being on the board, as before and probably anybody else here, they have contested it. So it's not like they're looking at the assessed values. 
they're looking at it all the time. And there was decisions made to adjust some of their values years ago, both, both uh, Yankee Candle and Cabestro. So it's not like they're ignoring it and don't care because it's a small amount, but it is. Okay. Oh, I was just going to mention timing um, for next year. So rates are typically certified. Assessed values are typically certified. October, October, I guess. Late October, November. When would, so I guess if, if we're looking at in terms of timing, if they're November, let's say then the tax classification hearing happens, middle of November. Um, so working backwards from that in terms of sort of maybe when we might want to start trying to gather the gather the information. I don't know how long that would take, but well it can we be gathered. It can be gathered starting say July 1st. That's the beginning of a new fiscal year. So any reports that are generated from the computer can be done starting July 1st, right. that way it's up to date. That's when you have, but when is everything set in terms of assessed values? It's, it's when it's certified, right? For FY24 yeah. now. Yeah, and that's usually sometime in October. Okay. It shouldn't go much later than that. Right. Okay, so why don't we sort of have that as a draft sort of time frame, tax classification in middle, yep. middle of November. I think it was who had a question? Julian. Julie. Yeah. Go ahead. Julie. It wasn't yeah. actually a question. I was going to say thank you to Fred for uh, educating us about what Yankee Candle gives back to the community because I was unaware of that and it's really good to know. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you're, the, you're typical of other people don't know. I, I guess that's. Maybe one thing that kind of disturbs me a little, uh, I, I see that going on in the paper. I even saw something in the Springfield paper two weeks ago, the town fire department got some money, $10,000 for, wow. for helping the, the fire department with their, I don't know, turn out equipment or something. So that was two weeks ago. Today, I haven't seen anything on any any website, Waley or anything, even Facebook or, or blog or whatever, thanking whoever at the state gave us money. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And I, I know I don't blame Brian on that. I have other, other more important things to do rather than track maybe donations or publish, publicize everything they get online. But, uh, no, but that sort of thing really should go online. Yeah. Well, something to look at, Brian, once you get fully staffed again. <laughs> yeah, when I, you get I, bored, I, I know especially the Yankee Candle stuff. Like I said, it's been going on for years, but it's mm -hmm. never never put anywhere online. I don't know if Deerfield does it or not, or Frontier does it or not. Okay. Are we done with that item on the agenda? So it's going because, to be mid October that we get the stuff to the yeah. to the select board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, select board for the assessors. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Brian, for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I do. I do have a question before you leave. Yeah, I yeah. do have a quick question. There are two items on our agenda that are not public. What do I do at the end when I adjourn? Do I just say we're going into executive session? I've for, sort of forgotten my Robert's rules of order. <laughs> um, the agenda should really say that you're going into executive session. Well, mm -hmm. I can I can I can amend it to make that. Well, we can just pass or, over the items. Just or you can pass over. It. No, we can't pass over. They have to be said. They have to be talked to next time. It's not public information. Well, yeah, but we can table it for the meeting for this meeting, public meeting. If we uh, can go into executive session, yes. Well, do we need executive session? Why don't we just table it then? Because then we're meeting without it being public. 
we you know that it's a no-no. But, but you just said it doesn't have to be public, so. Can you? It cannot be public. It cannot the information be. is not public. Do you have to discuss the information? Yeah. You have to discuss it with the information that you. There is only sign. There, there are two, three abatement applications mm -hmm. in, and that is not public in the discussion. The okay. values will become public once we settle yeah. on it, but it's not a public discussion. And we have one exemption that I do not believe qualifies. That is definitely not something to be discussed publicly. Can you discuss it without revealing any of the not information really. that you can not, not reveal? Because really. it, it's because it's probably exempt from the public records law. Is is probably what you're telling me, right? That's what I think I'm telling them, yes. Um, so, I mean, I, your choice, I mean, I think the agenda should say it's going to be executive session. Well, no, um, I know that. But if it doesn't, it's your call as to whether you want to go into it or not. Um, if you do choose to go into it, then you would vote to go into it. You'd hold your executive session. You would want to say your motion, whether you're Returning to open session afterwards or not? It sounds like you're not. Right. We would do. Uh, we'll skip over those two and finish up, and then go okay. into executive session. Right. So that's 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 your call, really. Okay. Uh, Henceforth. <laughs> but what if as you're in in session, you make a decision that you have to say something has to be addressed? I don't know. I just wish this whole hybrid thing would go away. <laughs> So if you do, if yeah, you do go into executive session, you would move everybody to the waiting room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's no, not a hybrid not. that's causing the problem. It's the open meeting law, that the open meeting law requires that you say in your agenda if you're going into a, a executive session, in your agenda that gets posted 48 hours beforehand. So it's not a problem of hybrid versus not hybrid. It's a problem of our open meeting law being maybe a little bit onerous and inflexible. And, but don't worry, our state reps have exempted themselves from having to follow the open meeting law. Oh, well, so that's everybody, good. Don't worry. Don't worry so, about it. So you would do a roll call vote if you want. If, you're gonna if, if we're going to do it. Okay. Now, okay. Actually, only Joyce is, uh, has yeah, I'm, I'm going to go anyway. So, but, uh, but I just thank you for letting me rant a little bit about open meeting law. And, sure. uh, and I appreciate being able to come to this, even though I'm at work today. Okay. Bye. 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 So as long as there's nobody other participants except board of assessors, then it will just be okay. Or if anybody pops in there, just and I have been checking from time minute. to time. So can we turn it off, or are we still no? We, it's still oh, okay. okay. Until we get to the three and four. No, okay. we're just going to do it all because nobody Nobody's else is there. on. We'll see if anyone shows up. Yeah, yeah, I know, but my point is, is this is all recorded. Right. I was, if I were you, I would probably stop the. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have to. We don't have a good way to separate out. So we actually just to join, process. and then we can go on and discuss the two items, even though we're no longer in a public meeting. Is that what you're what saying? You would, well, you would be. Um, I mean, I will call for. You would be in a public meeting in executive session. Okay. And then we're out and it's not being recorded. Anymore. And I would turn off the recording. Yes. If I can remember how to do it. Exactly. I would press the power button. Right. People are looking at this on channel 15, aren't they? Yeah. Is that rec isn't it live? Nope. It says it's now live. What does that mean? It says, no, this meeting's not being broadcasted. Oh, it isn't. Oh, okay. Oh. It's only being it's only it's only live on Zoom right now. Oh, okay. There's a bunch of other steps that are a little more complicated to get that. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay. Who yeah. decides which meeting you're broadcast or not? How how does one know? Um, I, I'm just curious. Oh, okay. Well, the only ones that we the only ones that are right now are our select board. Oh, okay. People okay. want to broadcast theirs. That's um, that's good. Look at that way. <laughs> and we gotta train people on that magic box. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, try and train. Good yeah. luck with that. So you can do a roll call vote for one executive session okay. while this is on. And then once if the motion passes, then you could shut that off. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Got it.
Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. That's my best advice. To find out if it's broadcast, look at look at the agenda. Look at the calendar of the meetings they have. Okay. okay. If you see a meeting at six o'clock that you want to go to, six o'clock, turn your TV on channel 15 to know if it's broadcast. Yeah. That's how you're going to know. Really? Okay. Yeah. You can, you I, can do I, that. I was just curious what, how things are, who decides what broadcast. Yeah, I know. Decides. Yeah. You know, it's just, I'm yeah. just curious about who's in charge. Okay. Yeah. Well, I feel that was a, a productive okay. thing. Mm -hmm. So, mid-October, we're all set. Yeah. All way now. I have not taken any notes, by the way. I'll have to come up with minutes. You'll have to watch the... Yeah. <laughs> watch, <laughs> I'll have to watch the VA and take shorthand. Okay, so we're going to skip that right for right now. We're going to zip ahead. We're going to skip these for right now. We're going to skip ahead to Mayflower. I just, I've talked twice now with uh, Dwayne, and I sent for him only. I didn't say for his eyes only. And he's, he assures me that it's okay that James read it, but I did send him an email where I yeah. put in my concerns about yeah. things not being done. And then I said, we did, in fact, they had given us a contract last year for two years, and we crossed out the second year. I don't actually remember why why that decision was made at a properly posted meeting, uh, but it was. Anyway, here is the contract for this year, and it's a little bit more, but not much. And I said to Dwayne, they're going to want to know why it's gone up. And... He said, well, the short answer is everything's gone up. And I said, yes, I understand. I don't believe anything has changed in what they're going to do. Uh, he said that I can make changes on that because I would like to specify, and they do leave a room to specify kind of, uh, the number of properties I want them to look at and for what reason I thought I had made it very clear which is all the stuff I said in this email that I yeah. sent to Dwayne yeah. and that we then showed to James. He says, oh, he doesn't take anything personally. Well, easy to say. Okay, so I was talking about 10 and then I'm here is talking about 15 for, for our maintenance specialists. And that's, again, that is very, I mean, I'm going to, you know, look and see. I mean, I said to him, I mean, for example, I don't believe anybody went to Yankee Candle, and I think that needs to be looked at. Yeah. They yeah. had a big building permit. Nothing was noted that they had been to look at it. Now, it may or may not add value on the market. I mean, you put Which it one? The one on the second 10? Oh, for sure. Oh, for okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, the other one is here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I said, you know, there are a lot of improvements that don't add to the market value, you yeah. know, unless you happen to be making candles, for example. And there is no personal property tax for them, essentially, because uh, they're a manufacturing corporation. Right. Um, so that's that. So you can look at that, I guess, a bit, and then we'll, we'll move on. Now, this has to be in our budget for next year. It's just right, and time. I have not yet submitted a budget, although I read today it was supposed to have been submitted by the 11th. Okay. But uh, I will get it. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so we, can it's we sign this? Yeah. Is it that's approved in a budget? They have to. They want it by April 1st. I mean, I, or I think... I forget what they yeah, the budget doesn't get approved until town meeting. Well, yeah. I mean, we're going to get the money. We have to have them. They have to do the 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 two five hundred fours that we have. We have no choice. And I did, I did uh, send out an email to a dozen area towns, and the ones that got back to me all said, uh, we really want to have somebody do it. It's very complicated. And you have to then explain it to the state yeah. and, and justify your own way of doing it. They basically, everybody said it is not worth the effort to try to learn it. You let the 
experts do it. So that's the story on that. So there's not an awful lot. I believe that those two things alone are like five thousand dollars of the eighty-seven, and the rest is what we yeah. own is eighty-seven hundred. Yeah. Every all the rest we've always paid around three thousand dollars to get. Yeah, and it just makes the whole tax rate the setting process well, much, much more smoothly. And according to Duane, so many people in my position and in your position are retiring. Yes. Yeah. Their business is uh, <laughs> booming. They can't handle all, yeah. the, all the business they have because towns are now hiring them to do what I do, for example. Yeah. Oh, but I bet they don't get paid as much. <laughs> I know. I'm I said that. Really, really high paying. Oh, yeah. Said that, huh? Yeah. Babysitters in New York make more than I do. Yeah. But anyway, nobody has joined since us. That's good. <laughs> um, okay, so that's that. Oh, wait, I didn't sign. Are we supposed to sign that? It has no. to be signed, yeah. yeah I, didn't. I think it's room for all three. Oh, I didn't sign it either. No. I just reviewed that. Where do you sign that? Where is that? I saw it was there. Maybe yeah. it's just the grammar who signs it. Except if Except I... Except if I... Right, this is my representative. That, that must be me. Can you get just the chair? I guess. So you could all sign it. I don't... I don't I think you should all sign it. Okay, sign it here. Oh, should it just be? Somebody else is going to sign no. it. Please. No, he's going to sign it. Twist it. You're all yeah. going to sign yeah. it. Twist your arm. It's a law. You have to yeah. do it. Here, here, I signed it on the line. We're reporting. I'm going to run over your signature. <laughs> you have to put yours there now. You couldn't tell me. Ah, you put it in the top. He's doing that. End of quotation. It's okay. valid for 30 days. Um, the house that uh, Jim LaSalle lived in on uh, Haydenville. Haydenville Road is about to be sold. And uh, Dick that. Bishop, the lawyer, wants, uh, wants the old. Chapter 61 liens released. So I did talk to him and I could put all four things on a single filing. He's going to pick it up tomorrow when he comes to pick up his grandchildren at school. <laughs> so there's that. And we'll get Brian or, or somebody to notarize it. But what would be the amount we're talking about? What is the value? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's it it's been um uh, it's been off the out, out of chapter for a while. Well, why? why uh, because they were never released. Oh, okay. So they just want to make sure that everything is released. Everything is going to yeah, yeah. They weren't. Well, actually, it was just this year that they didn't get chapter value. Okay. Yeah. Um, they did not renew the, uh, the cutting plan and all that. It's every 10 years for chapter 61. Did they get, you know what, that sold for? No, I don't. I didn't see it on Zillow. I didn't see it either. On my it might be a private sale. Oh, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah that, I don't, it was on my bottle. It was? Yeah, a few months ago. You know what they uh, what was were asking? I don't remember. I don't remember. Four, at least four. Okay. Uh, okay, we have the time. We have this is for Fred to sign and time sheets and then time sheets. Yeah, here. Oh, and uh, FYI, assuming I don't retire, which I'm always on the edge of thinking about. Oh, no, I am taking the second half of May off. Second half of what? May. May. Congratulations. That means we get it off. Oh no, I always have all the all the sheets set up for Yeah, but you. usually we don't start until after. Oh no, we usually start in, at the end of April. Yeah, we do. 
Yeah, I'll look at I, I I'll look to, at my calendar. Yeah, I'll look at mine too. I have a calendar. I keep track. Of I that. have. I go back like we usually decades. will look at some really <laughs> close by place if it's warm by the end of April. Would you move that arrow out of my head? I would maybe put it someplace else. Just move it. No, that's oh maybe this. Yeah. There you go. There. Thank you. Here we'll put it up on the on the flag which got low an F rating there according to the. Yeah, it's all right here. Well, an F rating from the uh, the flag people. They have I can't remember the. the I know a flag. Do can I give them a flag? I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. Who that gives a flag? No flag. Who rated? There's some. Rated my there's some. some I can't something. remember the word. It's, yeah. it's it's the Greek word for flag. Um, uh, ology, and they rated uh, Waitley as an F. Uh, mean this? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that? I thought you meant a flag. Well, it is on it's the on flag. flag. That's it's on a flag. Oh, on the flag. Yeah, there, there it is, right there. There it is. Oh, that flag. And oh, then, they don't like it. And then there was another town, I forget which yeah, town, yeah. that did a quilted flag. It yeah. was really nice. Well, they did they quilted one. They got an F. Oh, <laughs> how do they not answer that? I don't know. No, that's not. But they like Sunderland. That. You know, that Sunderland had had a wave of, of green like grass, and then they had some blue like water, and then they showed some plant. No, they showed the tree, the lone tree, because a buttonball tree probably, and the flag. So they like Sunderlands, yeah. So they like this simple, simple ones. Oh, I like it. Oh, I, I, I do. I do too. I, I, I like color for laughing. It's oh, the colors are but. You know, I mean, yeah, oh, jazz it up. Okay, put next. something that's relevant, like Yankee Candle. Company. Here was the, uh, here was sort of a late arriving uh, one of those. I'm taking them. I, I'm not worrying about dead ones. So they all had gotten signed. So I figure sign that one too. My hair is sticking right out. Cameras aren't good to me. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to find my I'm agenda. My head head head. See, have we done everything on the agenda except for? Right. Are there any other new or old business that you want to discuss? I think we've done everything. Where are you going? Sicily. Oh, what? Oh, the post pandemic. Ah, shit. That's wonderful. Yeah, we have our flights, we have our car. Do you, are you staying at one place? Are you traveling? Two, two, two places. places and then traveling between. But is that the trip that got canceled? Yes, only I'm not going with them. I'm going with my son and daughter. -in -law. Oh, nice. Uh, That's really nice. Have you ever traveled with them? No. Oh, oh we. No, take a lot of nice out of it. I, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't, she might be a little iffy. I think she kind of likes a little bit posher places. I like kind of gritty places. Yeah. So I like cheap. And cheap. cheap I do good. too. I go, I, I go cheap. cheap. <laughs> that rustic look works for me. Okay. Well, let me just do other things. Here. Last meeting we, we talked about, well, there was a memo we we're going to go to Brian. We never did send that, right? So we never we, did think of the four, the uh, uh, thing of conduct. Oh, the conduct, the right. Conduct, well, that, no. yeah, the conduct. Well, the first this memo, we never, we never, I we just, never sent it. Never sent it. Okay. So that's a, a good issue, I guess, right? Well, it's been, yeah. my feeling is I watched those two things. I'm not concerned with them. Okay. Again, I watched the British Parliament. Okay, and the other no, thing we're not the British Parliament. I know, but still, I mean, you know, it was I mean, you want to watch our own Senate yeah. senators, the House oh, Republicans. I, they're trying not to watch yeah. them at all. The code of conduct thing, are we doing any more of that? Uh we certainly could. I could uh do I still have the paper that's that said which which towns had it? I there are two things I'm gonna actually do, and I can do it to everybody. I'm going to send around to the to our, you know, our immediate area yeah. towns. I'm going to ask if they have a code of conduct for meetings, and if so, they'd be uh, willing to provide us with yeah. one. And I'm going to ask how many seniors get their senior exemptions, and and how they, and and if they publicize. And those are two questions I'm going to send around. Yeah, I'll probably get to it tomorrow. 
Yeah. Here is that article. I just think I just think it makes sense to have right. Oh, does Oh, okay. The lines are cut off right here. I think it's inside the second page. Oh, okay. That part, so you can have that. But okay, you're following up with that. Yes, I am following. But that never went to Brian. No, because uh, yeah, one of you you wouldn't sign it without seeing. Well, no, it. that was the other letter. That other to him, but but the code of conduct thing. Never I went. think that was the code of conduct. Well, we it? talked about it in there, but it never went. It never was attached to this. Oh, okay. But should we really adopt a code of conduct right. that says like other towns? Right. Okay. I think we well, should, should we, we should find it? out what other towns have. Yes, but they I are. think I'm going to do that first. That chapter yeah. application came in real late, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So do that. Yeah. And it says in, in there some idea who has yeah. it. So I think Coleraine and Northfield and Jerfield. Yeah. Uh, I forget. Yeah. 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 I'll look at it. Yeah. I wanted to bring up when they were all listening the thing about Coleraine losing its one big industry because of conservation things that you know it's it's easy to lose a business yeah yeah and what what Larnhart is going out as of the end of this month because and I believe it was the state conservation said oh you can't now you understand that factory has been there forever yeah it's yeah. been there because the water is so good in in coal rain that they have put up with the inconvenience of bringing the big semis in and on uh, Route 112 and trying to park them and all. But there was a real economic advantage to them to do their, their bleaching in coal rain. Amazing. Yeah. Three companies since I've lived there because of that. The state conservation people came in and said, you can't have your tanks down low the way you do in the uh, River Valley. You have to move them up onto hills. Oh, wow. That was going to be millions of dollars. And they said, okay, we're out of here. Yeah. We're out of here. Hey, but they'd like to come to Waitley. Yeah. yeah, but we don't want our, we've already had problems with oh. water. It's You're telling me that. <laughs> it smells like that. It smells like a septic. But I thought that was just not quite, yeah, quite relevant. But I did want to say that businesses do pay attention. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're we'll losing new pro here, but it's not because of that. But we're yeah. going to Deerfield. Yeah. So that's going to be vacant next door. There's office yeah. building. We lost that store. beer roar with Deerfield. Right. Yeah. yeah. They wanted to keep it to North to Burns. Yeah. yeah. So is all of Waitley, like all the way, all of the flatlands, it's all crappy water. No, no. Mine, mm -hmm. mine, ours is the worst. We're the end of the line, I think. What about on. I like, appreciate that, though. We're going to make the. There's, Plans to connect it under the railroad. So, what about on the Ejal Road? No, so we're talking with that's that's right. Yeah, it's bad there. Yeah. It's bad there. Remember, we went to what Hammer's trucking or something yeah. in their bathroom they didn't use because of the smell. Oh, really? It, yeah. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Oh, so, Egypt Road, Should, the water is bad can, too. Can we actually come to an end with this? Sure. And then yes. <laughs> I would like to continue this meeting as. As a meeting in an executive session to discuss exemptions and abatements, which are not public information. Do I hear a motion? Yes, yes. I motion, I motion it. And a second? Second. Vote? Yes. 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 Okay, we are now in executive session. We will not be returning to a public meeting.